You have come to this very special night that is the official launch for OG Lala, William Patrick Corgan. Ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk about the album then. Yes. OG Lala, it comes out on the 13th of October. The re album was recorded with Rick Rubin mm -hmm. in Shangri-La Studios. You sent him some recordings or some demos? I decided that I was either going to quit music or write a group of songs that I cared about, even if I stuck them in a box. I wrote the songs. I thought there's something here. I called Rick as a friend and said, can you recommend some bearded guy in Topanga Canyon who would understand <laughs> what I'm doing? You know, like a, like a Patchouli producer, you know? And he said, kind of almost like a little offended, like, well, I'm interested in that. And I looked at the phone like, did he just say he's interested in what I'm doing? Because I wasn't calling him for that. And so he said, send me the music. I sent him the music. He said, it's fantastic. Keep writing. I wrote more. I sent him that. He liked it more. He said, let's record. It was completely like out of the sky. So I'm really, really grateful to Rick. Because I was, I was definitely down when I, when I came to him. And he was the right person. So when you got there with Rick, I mean, how does it work? I mean, it, does he get you to do a performance and then you, you talk about the performance afterwards? Do you do a lot of talking beforehand? Yeah, I went to him right on the first day. We sat and talked for a few minutes and kind of caught up. And I said, you do your thing, I'll stay out of your way, which I've, of course, never done that either. It just felt right to say, I'm going to follow your lead. And so 15 minutes later, I'm sitting in front of a microphone and I'm recording. It was like right in. And so... That's why then he, he sticks in and goes, swim. Yeah. It's awesome. And then you augmented those recordings. Yes. Afterwards. In the beginning, it was kind of after a little bit of a, like an electronic thing, which is sort of strange, and it kind of went nowhere fast. So then he said, well, what would you do? And I said, well, I would do, and I, I sort of explained something akin to how I would orchestrate like a song like Tonight Tonight or something. And he said, okay, try that. And I did it, and he was like, that's it. It, it made sense in my brain, like, oh, he likes that, and that's, I just did that, and every time I did it, he was like, awesome. For me, it's just strictly like, it's just all melodies in my head. It's like they just spin in my head like a weird kaleidoscope. Tell us about Aeronaut, the song Aeronaut, mm -hmm. because that's the first taste we've had of this new album. And when we were chatting the other day, you were explaining how, in your head, it probably wouldn't have been on the album. You, you, know, you, you wrote this song, oh, yeah. and the context of writing that yeah. and how that came about. I, I was wandering around America, staying at the lodge. My partner and my child are with me. And I'm sitting there just bored playing the guitar, and I and I, I I had I felt inspired to write a song for my son. I've only written one song for him so far, and I wrote the song um, like almost like a jaunty English dance hall tune, like tumbling down the middle, the world survives. Look out, son, the air's alive. Call it ether, elemental, I ooh da da. Like almost like a Paul McCartney jokey song or something, right? And uh, didn't think anything of it, but decided even the day I did it to send it to Rick, I was like, eh, probably not well, I, sh I should trust him, put it on there. So when we're, when we're recording, we went through all the songs, and he goes, let's do that one. And I, th I thought he was joking. And he was like, just trust me on it. And so within a half an hour, I'm playing, it's like a slow Beatle ballad or something, and it was like, it's just like a song I didn't even know I had, and I wrote it. So that's all Rick. Yeah, and it's magical. I mean, that's, that's why he's that guy. He heard something I would have never heard in a million years.